Welcome back to another JP Captured installation video. Today we're going to be running through how to install a winch onto your four wheel drive. I've got the Rumba 11XP Premium 12 volt winch. Now what we're gonna be doing is a bit of an unboxing today. We're gonna to show you what's inside the box, what you get from Rumba, which I'm sure you guys know, you've done your research. Rumba give you a lot of product for your money. Now we're gonna be doing the unboxing, then we're gonna jump into an installation on the vehicle, and in later videos, we're gonna do an on the track test. So, first things first, let's take a look what's inside the box and what you get for your money. Okay, so the first thing on top is a thank you for choosing a Rumba winch. No worries, Rumba, it was an easy decision. So, here are some useful tips to get you started. Please follow also our basic winch maintenance guide below for many years of trouble-free winching. Nice. So we've got a sticker in there and some information inside that sleeve. First thing. All right, we've got a diagram here. And this diagram is a power pull installation diagram, and that's showing the thimble shackle installation. That one there is the instruction manual. Okay, so now for the actual product. So first things first, we've got the isolation switch on top. That allows you to send power to the winch only when you choose to. We've got some bracketry here. Next thing, we've got a wide winch controller. Now, Rumba have also supplied a wireless winch controller. Now, this controller here might look a little bit different to what you guys are used to. That's because Rumba has updated it now. So it's a new style controller and it looks really good. So that's also included. Stubby cooler, two stubby coolers. More bracketry with some nuts and bolts. Rated D shackle, heavy duty wires, nuts and bolts for mounting. One last piece on top, shackle thimble. And that's the products from the first layer done. So now onto the next layer of gear. We've got the solenoid with heavy duty wiring. And we have a black aluminium fair lead, a rated snatch block, power lead, a neoprene rumba winch cover. Now, this is good if you're mounting your winch on the top of your bull bar and it's exposed to the elements. This keeps all of those away from your winch. Now, I'm gonna be mounting my winch inside the bull bar, down inside the Ironman bull bar, so I won't be needing a winch cover for this one. And now the moment everyone's been waiting for, the winch. Rightio, we've had a look what is included in the box. Now let's take a look at the winch itself. So straight away you can see that you've got the Dyneema synthetic rope already reeled onto the drum. I prefer synthetic rope, so this is a massive bonus. I don't really like steel cable. I know a lot of people prefer the synthetic stuff as well, so it's a good place to start. Now overall length of this winch is 575 millimeters end to end. It weighs about 31.4 kilograms. So it's not overly heavy, but it's heavy enough to know that it is a good quality build. Now, a big advantage on the 11XP premium models over the 11XP is things like the low profile clutch lever on here. Now that is really an advantage for newer bull bars because they don't really have a lot of room to mount the winch and to get your hand in there and move this lever around. Some of them have a lever that sticks up higher and that can get in the way of the bull bar and you can't operate it, which means you have to buy a low profile lever. They're about 50 bucks off Rumba's website. Now, another benefit to the 11XP Premium model is it is completely IP67 waterproof rated, not just the motor like on the 11XP model. Now, that is a massive advantage. The whole winch can be submerged in one meter of water for up to 30 minutes, and it is waterproof rated for that. So it's like a lot of your new smartphones. It carries the same sort of waterproof rating as those do. So that is a huge advantage to a winch. It is going on a four-wheel drive, which is going to be submerged in muddy water at some point. So having something that's sealed up nicely is a massive advantage, and Rumba have really thought about that. So... Paying the extra $100 for this model over the 11XP base model of this type is, in my opinion, well worth it straight away. You've got a better build quality overall of the whole winch. You've got the better winch lever over here. You have some better controllers and things like that as well. There's a few little 
benefits in the package, but the main stuff happens right here on the winch where it is a massive upgrade and something that you definitely need to get. So if you're not worried about saving that hundred dollars, this is the way to go. And plus it looks freaking awesome. Alrighty then, so we've seen what's included inside the box. Now it's time to show you how to install a winch onto your full drive. So before we start any other work on the vehicle, what we need to do is remove the earth strap from the battery. This will prevent you from being able to arc out on the battery and damaging other electrical parts on the vehicle. So for this part of the installation, we're going to install the winch. Now, what you need to do is gain access to your winch cradle. That will vary depending on the bar that you're using. So for me, I'm using an Ironman bull bar. So my winch cradle is accessible through the top. So I'll need to remove my grill in order to gain access to that now. So for an MP300 grill, you have a total of four lift up clips. So two either side, then you've got four push and twist clips accessible through the side of the grill. So two either side, and then you've got a series of clips down the bottom which you just have to pinch in and pull away and that will come undone. Right here guys, it's time for the exciting part of this installation. Grab your winch, it's time to install it into the winch cradle. So traditionally when installing a winch, you'd install the motor side on the right hand side of the vehicle and the gearbox on the left hand side. Ironman have left a massive spot up here to drop a winch in through the top so it's really easy. Your bar might be different, so check out how your winch cradle works and install it how it needs to go in. Okay, so for me to gain access to my winch cradle, I need to take off this bottom bash plate located here. So for the Ironman bar, it's 13 mil bolts. So there's two here, and then there's three on the front. Alrighty, so now that your Rumva winch is installed onto your winch cradle, you need to install the nuts and bolts supplied. So there's four of these nuts, which go into the bottom of the winch. There's little slots in the side that they go into, and then you've got four bolts with washers and spring washers, which go up through the bottom and bolt it all together. Like always guys, don't forget to start all of the threads by hand. Alrighty, these are 16 mil bolts. Alrighty, so now that the winch is installed onto the winch cradle, you can go ahead and install your supplied fair lead from Rumba and the bolt supplied as well. Now, once you've done that, you can pull the Dyneema rope through that and just have it hanging out the front for now. Okay, so it's time to start connecting and routing cables. This is the winch solenoid box, which has a series of cables coming out of it. These ones go onto the winch motor. Now they're all color coded, which is also color coded on the top of the winch motor, making things really easy. And then you've got your main power cable here. That one goes to the battery. You've also got your main earth strap here. That also goes to the battery. Alrighty, so now that we've fed through our cables, Go ahead and take the nuts off the top of the power posts here and keep them aside because we will need to refit them once we put the cables on. Alrighty, so this is extremely straightforward. The cables cannot get mixed up. We've got blue, which goes to the blue post. Let's just loosely put a nut on there for now. And then we've got yellow, that goes to the yellow post. And then finally, red, that goes to the red post. Go ahead and get a 13 mil socket and tighten down all three posts. Once the nuts on the posts are tightened down, go ahead and put the covers over them. Alrighty, so now that the three solenoid box cables are connected up to the winch motor, go ahead and grab the earth cable supplied by Rumba. There is a post on the bottom of the winch motor that is the earth post. We're going to connect up the other side of this to that, and we're also going to connect up the earth strap coming from the solenoid box to the same post. Alrighty, so now that we've connected up both of the earth leads to the bottom of the winch motor, this little one here is connected to the solenoid box, so we don't have to worry about that, that's already fed. This one here I've fed back up through here, and I'm going to run it through to the battery with the, power, with the main power lead from the solenoid box. Both of these leads, when the grill's back installed, I'm going to feed through the grill and back up, route it up through here neatly, and connect it back up to the battery terminals. So that's the way I'm doing it, guys. You can route it however you like. Just make sure when you are routing these cables, 
all of the cables that they don't come in contact with anything that's going to get hot or anything that it's going to rub on and cause it to rub through. Now I know that these leads have really thick conduit on the outside or um, thick guarding on the outside of them, but they will eventually wear through if they're rubbing on something that's moving, if friction is going to happen. So make sure you think about how you're routing them and route them accordingly. So to connect up the solenoid box, I'm using this angle bracket here. I believe there's a few different types that are supplied, but I'm gonna go with this one. Now I've angled it so that the solenoid box faces down, meaning the cables at the back sit up from the bulbar and don't get squashed. Now I'm going to have to centralize this. I'm gonna use these two points here on the bulbar to measure, get the center point, and I'm going to drill and use some nut certs in there to mount this bracket onto the bull bar. Alrighty, so I've whipped out my tape measure and I'm measuring from side to side here to get my center point for my solenoid bracket. Now I'm measuring 230 millimeters, so that gives me a center point of 115 millimeters. So I'm going to line up this bracket to 115 millimeters. So I'm gonna get it mounted central, front to back and side to side. One of the elongated holes on the front there, I'm going to get to 115 mil and about even front to back as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go and grab my uh, marking tool and I'm not going to press down because I don't think I'm going to have enough room. So I'm just going to put a mark where it needs to be and also a mark on the back where it needs to be as well. So grab a three millimeter drill bit to drill your pilot hole. Alrighty guys, now you've drilled your three millimeter pilot holes, you need to drill your final hole, which is going to be an M8 hole for the M8 bolt supplied by Rumva. However, I like to use nut certs. So I've got my trusty H&B warehouse nut cert tool. You can find these tools on their eBay store, H&B warehouse. You can use promo code JP captured for discounts. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is using an M8 nut cert, which means I'll have to be drilling an M11 hole. Now go ahead and tighten all the bolts down on the solenoid box. The bottom bolts are M14. Rightio guys, so that is all the cabling now connected up to the winch and the solenoid box is mounted. So what we're gonna be doing is running these two cables back in through the grill and up into the engine bay. So we need to get stuck into putting the grill back on and while we're at it, we'll put the bash plate on as well for good measure. Rightio, so I've run my power cable up through the grill, up here behind the headlight, dropping back in behind the guard, all the way out to here, right next to the battery, and popping back out, running alongside the battery, down around the back here, underneath this cabling, and right to this spot here, where I've actually found these two bolts, which I've already removed the nuts off, and that's where I'm gonna put my isolator switch. So the power lead will go to here, and the short power lead will go straight up to the battery after I've put my isolator switch in. Now, I've had to drill this bracket out. These bolt holes weren't in the correct position, but this mounting point was really optimal, so I've decided to go here and just re-drill a hole in the bracket. I'm just reusing the nuts that I took off these bolts originally. Now pop the isolator switch on using the supplied bolts. So connect the power strap coming from the winch to the bottom post. And then connect the cable that goes to the battery to the top post. Alrighty, so I've mounted up my isolator switch to the bracket. Now this top lead here goes straight up to the battery onto this post right here. There we go, that post there. And then the bottom lead 
that one goes straight to the winch motor, so all the way back down to the front. You can really have these whichever way you want. It doesn't matter on the isolator switch. It, it doesn't really matter. It just sends power either way. Now, that's that done. So now we've got to get this earth strut, this one here, and we've got to feed it down through here as well. And we're going to come out at exactly the same spot as the power lead there. So we'll just put this one back on, and then we'll connect it up to the terminal once it's all on. And that is done then, guys. That should be completely powered up. Radio guys, that is the winch now installed onto my four-wheel drive. I hope in some way this has helped you guys installing your own winch on your vehicle at home. Now, if you're making a purchase on one of these winches, make sure you use the link below in the description and use the promotional code JPCAPTURED for discounts. Now what we're going to do before we finish up this video is just run through a quick how to use your winch section. This will just run through the powering on and off of the winch and the winch controllers. So this is your isolator switch for the winch. This is the key. The run for winch comes with two of these keys. I usually keep an extra run in the vehicle and one I leave on here. So it's got three positions. That's the open position where the key can come all the way out and put the key in, turn it one way. Now that is still in the off position, but it's locked the key in place. So you can leave one in the engine bay like that if you'd like. Now, turning it all the way around, you'll feel a click. Now that is in the on position, meaning that now we can operate the winch. So on this side of the winch is the winch clutch. Now there's also that clutch lever, which running this way is in neutral, meaning you can pull the rope in and out freely. Forward is locked, meaning you're operating the winch. Okay, so to operate the winch, hold down on the power button until the top light flashes. And there, the red light has flashed, meaning that it's on. To operate the winch, you can use the in or out buttons, and that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so if we push out on the winch controller, that releases the rope. And if we push in on the winch controller, that's going to pull it back in. And that's now locked back into place. Okay, so as a backup, you can use your wired winch controller. And to use that, you need to grab this end of the wire with a plug on it, open up the plug controller on your solenoid box, plug it in, and push down until it clips into place. Grab your wired winch controller. It's exactly the same as the wireless one, the out, Let's the cable out and in, pulls the cable back in. So now that we've run through how to use the winch and the installation, you can confidently go out and get stuck on the tracks and know that you're safe and you can get yourself out again. Thanks for watching guys. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you get updated on all of my latest content. And if you like this video, drop it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions for me, drop them in the comments below. I will reply. Big